At this station, we're going to test the quality of the water from Patton Creek and determine if it is cold, clean, and clear for salmon. You may recall those three C's. Here's our opportunity to test some of those using scientific equipment and determine how healthy Patton Creek is based on the water quality. The first one that I'd like to start is the one that takes the longest, and that is dissolved oxygen. So you may be able to see behind me here, there's a strong current, and that current is helping to mix the oxygen from the air into the water and be accessible for the salmon to be able to breathe. Now, if you look at this chart, you'll see that salmon tend to prefer a high number of dissolved oxygen. Typically about nine or above is considered excellent for salmon. Six to nine, fair, and then below that, is poor and adult salmon and their eggs cannot survive in low oxygen environments. Fortunately, a creek like Padden Creek has a, a current versus a, a pond or stagnant water, which wouldn't have as much dissolved oxygen. So to test this, we have a very scientific equipment here that we'll use to test our water sample. Here's a sample that I pulled from Padden Creek this morning and we'll utilize this as our sample for this station. So make some observations about the water. What does it look like? How clear is it? We're gonna test this throughout this station. The first thing we need to do is add a couple chemicals to our sample. The first chemical that we're going to add, we call chemical one, but the actual name for it is manganese sulfate. And this chemical will essentially clean our water sample and pull any impurities out of the sample. Here goes our first chemical into our sample. I'm gonna immediately follow that by adding a second chemical. We call this chemical two, but the actual name for it is lithium hydroxide monohydrate. Ooh, that's a mouthful. This chemical will actually create a new molecule in our sample and separate the oxygen from the water, which you're about to see. Check this out. Here goes our chemical. Make some observations as that's starting to mix in. And I'm going to clear off the edge. and shake it. So you may have already noticed something happened to our sample. I'm gonna shake it a few times. I usually like to count to 10 or 20 to get it really mixed up. And then I'll set this down and you can see what happened. So make some observations. What colors do you see? Do you see anything in our sample? When I look at this, I see that it's turned into almost an orange juice color. It's a yellowish orange. And I see a lot of stuff, we could call it, or flock in our sample here. And again, that's because this chemical created a new molecule and is separating the dissolved oxygen from the water. So I'm going to put this back in our box here and let that settle. And we'll jump into another test while we do that. And that second test is temperature. So again, one of our three C's is cold. And you learned in one of our earlier videos that salmon prefer cold water. This is because cold water tends to hold more oxygen. Their eggs can survive in colder temperatures. And it's easier for those adults to breathe and survive in cold water environments. So how do we test temperature? Think about what tool you might use to test temperature. You may have guessed it. We're going to use a thermometer to test our temperature of Padding Creek. Again, we'll refer to our water sample that I collected this morning and pull out one of these thermometers. And I'd like you to take a look at our temperature and see if you can tell me what temperature we have. So we have a zero down here, and then we have a five, and a 10, and a 15, and a 20. So take some time, look at our sample. Okay. And when I'm reading this thermometer, to me, it's looking like our temperature is right around 14 degrees. And that's 14 degrees Celsius. So let's take a look at our temperature graph here. 
Again, salmon prefer temperatures that are colder, probably much colder than you would like if you were swimming. They prefer temperature between five and 13 degrees Celsius, or to put that into Fahrenheit, we're looking at 40 to around 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Probably a little too cold for us as humans to go swimming in, but salmon thrive in those temperatures. So let's look at our sample. We had 14 degrees Celsius, which falls right on the, the fair category in terms of temperature threshold for those salmon. So our first test has yielded us a fair result. We're now going to check back in on our dissolved oxygen test and see how it's doing. All right, so you may notice that all of our sedimentation in this sample has now settled to the bottom. I'll put this back down so we can see it. And in this stage, I'm going to add our third chemical. We call it chemical three, but again, the actual name for it is sulfamic acid. And this will bind the dissolved oxygen that's present in our sample to the new chemical. And again, you will see a change happen. All right, here we go. Okay, make some observations. Did you see anything yet? Next, I'll cap it. And again, 10 or 20 times, I will shake our sample. And check it out. So again, our sample has dramatically changed. It basically went from what I think of as orange juice to apple juice. You might have seen it change color. And if you look at the inside of our sample, all of that pulp material or all of that, that sedimentation has disappeared, okay? And the next thing that we're going to do is determine how much of our sample is dissolved oxygen. So when I referred to our chart at the beginning, I gave you some numbers. Nine and above is what salmon prefer but they can survive in anything six and above. And those measures are in parts per million. And the way that we can think about that is as a fraction. So if we take one million parts of water, how many of those parts are oxygen? That's the way that I think about parts per million. And we're gonna find out. To do that, we first need to transfer one million parts of water from our sample here into a measurable tube, and that's what this is for. So this tiny little tube, it's hard to imagine that one million parts of water will fit into this small tube, but in fact it does. And there you have it, one million parts of water. Now I'm going to put it in this container so that we can note one more change that's about to occur. And that will happen when I add our final chemical. We don't name this one chemical for, we just call it what it is, which is sodium thiosulfate. And this chemical is going to change our sample from the, the yellowish color that you see now to clear. And I'm gonna add one drop of sodium thiosulfate at a, a time and shake our sample or stir it after every drop. And let's make some observations to determine how many drops you think it takes to turn our sample clear. There's one, two, three, four, five, have you seen any changes yet? To me, it looks like it's getting a little bit lighter. Six. Seven. Eight. 
still see a little yellow tinge. Nine. Oh, that changed it pretty dramatically. Let's try one more. We'll see if it changes. And if not, we'll say nine parts per million. 10. Oh, that does, did look like it changed enough. So I think it's safe to say that in Patton Creek, our measurement is 10 parts per million. And again, if we refer to our graph, we're looking at this number right here, which puts us in the excellent range and tells us that the water in Patton Creek has enough oxygen for salmon to not only survive, but to be able to thrive in this water. Let's move on to our last test. And our last test is focused on something called turbidity. And turbidity is essentially a measure of the amount of erosion that is affecting our water and also measures how clear our water is. So we looked at how cold our water is with temperature. We kind of took a look at how clean our water is with dissolved oxygen and also with macroinvertebrates. And now we will focus on how clear it is. How much erosion, how much sedimentation is getting into our water. I want you to take a look at these three samples. I'll put them all in a stack so it's easier for you to see. On the top we have low, on the middle we have medium, and on the bottom we have high turbidity. Imagine that you are a little salmon fry, you're living in Padden Creek, and you're trying to find food. Which of these samples would you like to live in the most? I'll give it a shake. What do you think? Low, medium, or high? And for me, if I'm a salmon, I definitely want to live in the low turbidity because I'll be able to see my prey, I'll be able to see if a predator is trying to find me, and I won't have my sensitive gills clogged by this dirt and material that's in the other samples. So how do we measure the amount of turbidity in our water. Well, we do that by using a scientific tool like we've been using. This is called a turbidity tube. And this will tell us how clear our water is. You'll notice a scale that is on the side of our turbidity tube. That scale aligns with this scale. And again, you can see that salmon prefer water that is anywhere from about one to 10 on our scale. As you have rain events that wash sedimentation into the water, you start to see the water become more cloudy and it deteriorates the water clarity for those salmon. So the way that we do this is we're going to take a peek into this tube. On the bottom of this tube is a small shape. It's called a secchi disc. And I want you to look into the top of this tube and see if you can find that shape that's at the bottom. All right, I'm gonna take a peek in here too. Oh yeah, I can definitely see the shape at the bottom of this tube. So you might have seen a shape that is a circle and it has two black triangles and two white triangles on it, on our secchi disc. Because we were able to see that when this tube is completely filled with water from Patton Creek, that tells us that we have a rating of one or zero even on our turbidity scale which tells us that we have excellent, clear water for salmon. So let's take a look at our water quality samples as a whole. Today we did three tests. We tested the dissolved oxygen, we tested the temperature, and we tested the turbidity of the water from Patton Creek. And we found that our dissolved oxygen at a rating of 10 parts per million was excellent. We found that our temperature at a rating of 14 degrees Celsius was fair, it was slightly above the 13 degrees that we would have liked to see or below. And we found that our turbidity was zero, which also falls within the excellent range, giving us two excellent ratings and one fair rating for our overall water quality of Patton Creek. So I'd like you to take a few seconds to come up with a conclusion based on those parameters. What do you think about the health of Patton Creek based on the water quality.